There he is. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Oh, there he goes. Oh. Another double. <laughs> I might have found a couple little little crappie here. Mm -hmm. Don't look like no keepers, but we got a couple little crappie. There he goes. Oh, I think he got four right there. They're not too bad. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that's the color I should have been using my whole time. They like the hot pink and electric chicken. Water temperature is jumping between 44 and 45. So the water is warmer than the air temperature. But anyway, guys, we're going to try to do a little crappie fishing today with a slip bobber and a hand tied jig, probably with a crappie bite. And if that don't work, I'll throw them in on there. And if that don't work, we'll go to the beetle spin and float some jigs and bobbers around the boat and try to get get us a good mess that way hopefully we catch some nice dandy sized crappie that's what i would really love to do but if i can catch a good mess i'll be happy let's go get them guys this is a good technique to use anytime summer winter fall spring but in the winter you got to go a little slower because the crappie are a little less aggressive in fact sometimes they're just plain stubborn <laughs> But we just want to cast it out there, pull, stop and pause. And then, you know, the wind, when the wind's blowing it like that, you don't have to give it a whole lot of movement. Sometimes that helps and sometimes it hurts. Cause a lot of times, especially with that jig just sitting horizontal with the water, them crappie will bam, hit that jig when it's just sitting there dead still. That's why I do that guys. Cause it looks like a fish just sitting in the water. But getting another little breeze here going. See if we can get us a crappie. Pull up there a little bit more. I generally catch one crappie here or so. It just depends. I can usually coax one of them into bite. We're gonna try it again. Get enough splashes in the area and a couple of them take notice to it. I say it's 44.9 right now. The temperature's pretty cold. They're kind of they're gonna be kind of stubborn and slow but you just got to stay after them because it oh the thing is they're they're not real aggressive like a bass is most of the time most of the time they're finicky biters they're gonna they're just gonna find that they follow the shad around and stuff and when they find the weaklings getting out of place they'll go over there and jump on that weakling so they can fill their belly with the least effort as possible and they'll just keep eating like that all day they'll follow that bait all day long but some of them get in these ambush spots they, they they're looking for certain you know plankton probably and other stuff oh there he was you just got to keep on uh giving it to them and and throwing it presenting it to them and seeing what they want eventually you'll catch something you know eventually you'll give them what they're looking for but you ain't gonna give them nothing if you ain't doing it. You gotta get out there and do it first. You gotta get it out there. Show them that, oh, there he goes. You gotta show them that you're interested. I need to tighten this bag a little bit. He might be, yeah. He's a little guy. Little black crappie. Yeah. All right, leg. Okay, guys. I think I had a little nibble over there. Get my hook set back right. Try it again. I don't know what it was, but I think it might have been a crappie. Now, which is good if it was. I can throw me a. Oh! My drag loosened up for some reason. Oh, he's a bass. <laughs> well. I thought he was a crappie. He's a fighter. Yeah, you too yet? <laughs> he got a dark lateral line on him. And he is not through. He's not happy about it. Yeah. It looks like he needs to eat a little more. He's not bad though. He's a healthy looking bass. Pretty thick. Later. 
There it goes. Well, guys, this is what I do when I get my jigs ready. I just get all these uh, jigs lined up, and uh, I'll hook them right in the center, get around that curve, poke them through, that right there. Put it in the light where you can see that. You want to go about the center. Just kind of go through there, get it around the curve, and then pop it through the back. And I don't push them all the way on yet, because... I got a trick to save you a little bit of hassle and some money. Push it around, pop it through the back. And one more. Oh, I got a couple more here. Right through. All right, now what I do is take super glue and I tag this, this jig on each side right here. Right, right, right where you push the jig up on there and then I let that dry and I just do several hooks like this this just takes a little bit and you want to use super glue gel it's the cleanest and easiest don't want to get that stuff all over you use super glue gel it's better works better for this anyhow and that will keep them jigs on there. These old fish will pull on their tails and they'll pull them down off the hook. Well, that keeps it from happening. That, that happening. And it really makes that jig. make you get, you get a lot more usage out of your jig like that, guys. So you can go through a pack of jigs in a day easy. But if you do this right here, you take half of that pack and put them on hooks with super glue. I guarantee you they'll last you a few days. Oh, there he is. There's a little, little white crappie. He liked the electric chicken. That's, that's why I'm working on them right there. Because I know what they, I'm pretty sure that's what they want anyhow. I know he did. Easy, easy. Light it. It's pretty at times, but there's some wind gusts. That's pretty strong around here. Oh, that looks good. And that tree ought to have a crappie. Oh, there he is. Oh, he was there. Yeah, the reason I say that, because of the way the... Hmm, I wonder if I can get him to bite again. It's out further than the rest of them. I can't hardly catch up to him. That's a bass. <laughs> That's a bass. He's a fighting. Well, it wasn't a crappie. It was a bass. <laughs> I knew it should have one. Nice chunky one. Look at that belly. I see it's that's a female. Gotta be a female full of eggs. She's getting ready. Already ready for the spawn. Later. Well guys, I'm gonna change colors. I'm taking that pink phantom off. And I'm putting me on a electric chicken. And that's a 16th ounce with the size 2 hook. And I'm gonna put this minnow back on there. He's still, old beetle spin can swim him around so it don't matter if he dies or not, but he's still lively. We good. See what the old electric chicken will do. There he goes. Oh yeah, I think he got a cool right there. Not too bad. Easy. Well, maybe that's the color I should have been using the whole time. Let's see what we got here. He liked the hot pink and electric chicken. Black crappie. These are pretty decent one too. Yeah. We're a little, little over 12 and a quarter. Good solid crappie. 
we're going to take it. There he goes. Look at here. Yep, he is cropping. Let's fix and get on it. I got two of them going. There's that one. Stick him in the boat. There's that one. There we go. Yeah, one's a little one, one's a maybe a keeper. That one got hooked pretty good. Let's see if we can get that hook out of there. There we go. Yeah, they're both, I think they're both too little. But that's okay. Nine and a quarter later. Get this other one out of here. And he's a little guy. He might be eight inches later. And guys, I want you to check out my rod holders. These things are pretty cool. Now, when you got your fish out there, this is what's so cool about them, in my opinion. When you got your fish out there, you need to set the hook on a fixed rod, a fixed rod holder. It don't move. So when you go to pull the hook back, you can't because of the it's fixed. These things flex. Watch this. You set the hook, flip the fish in the boat. That's what I'm talking about right there. Let me show you again. Uh, see how flexible they are? They just go on your tie down cleat and i got mine leaning a little lower they come fixed position but you just put you some spacers in here and you can readjust the height of that cleat to make that pitch change but i put some zip ties on here so i can just leave it on the boat when i'm going down the highway and i don't have to worry about them flying off or nothing it does come with the big wide rubber band right there but i just use this setup right here i want it nice and easy nice and loose so when i get that bite pull up set the hook and pull that fish in that is the way to go right there guys i got one there one there one right there and i just put another one right there and if you guys are interested in these you can look under the video in the description box under lunker trail rod holders and use the code name yanker and you can get a discount guys that's my plant oh there he is is he gonna be on there still Nope, he's not on there. He just got, he got a bite and left. Well, we're in the middle. It's making me wonder about where I'm fishing at. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Oh, there he goes. Oh, another double. <laughs> I might have found a couple little little crappie here. Mm -hmm. Don't look like no keepers, but we got a couple little crappies. Yeah, these, these guys are, well, he's almost a keeper. He's almost nine and three quarters later. And this other one. Oh, yeah, I'm hung up over there. Yeah. There's a little black crop y'all for here. Lighter. Maybe there's one right there in front of that tree. Some good hangout. Oops. There he is. Wow, that's a fast fish. That might be a bass. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Can't come to the top yet. That's the big drum. Big old drum. Got a pretty metallic blue drum. <clears throat> Scoop him up, get my lair back. Okay. Grab him carefully. Okay. If you grab him by the lip, he'll slip out of his hand, but if you grab him behind the wheel plate, 
in the mouth at the same time. So I put your finger and thumb together. You got them. Yep, that was a good bite. Yeah.